Hello my wonderful people, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on your time zone or anytime you are coming across my platform. If you like what you are watching, kindly subscribe, put on your notification bell to all notifications and that way you'll be able to know when we upload a new video. Here we are to all forms of videos. I want to appreciate YouTube for creating this wonderful platform for us to use to disseminate information to the members of the public. I at the same time put disclaimer that linda's tv show do not and will not in any way promote hate speech misleading information or violence we are only here to educate the members of the public my dear wonderful humanity committed under the bokuwaris government state sponsored terrorism in eastern nigeria <laughs> So good morning to you, uh, good afternoon to you, and then a good evening to you from wherever you are watching from. Again, this is Mayegun live. Thank you very much for joining me to start with. And for those of you who probably have heard or seen this before now, you are welcome to us, uh, you know, discussing it. You remember that they usually said Namdi Kanu was just a noisemaker from the early stage, right? And then uh, at some point, they could no longer take it. But from the uh, whitewashing, worthless book that uh, Femi Okonu Adishino published recently, there is something about IPOB also stated there. In fact, Femi Okonu Adishino confirmed that Unam Dekanu was a real problem for not just for Bokwario, but for everyone around him to the point that they considered killing him. Let's kill him. They used the military. Somehow that failed. Then they initiated international sort of a worldwide assassination hunt of Unam Dikanu. Then he said, at a point, they felt like, mm, let's just kidnap him and keep him. Maybe that would discourage all these young Igbos to continue to demand for Biafra. Baba, they hatched an operation and a plan inside the asshole rock on Dabokwari to kill Namdikanu. And why? I'll tell you. You know, a lot of uh, Igbos today, eh, in particular, and Nigerians in general, through the Unamdekanu's uh, broadcasts, the ones that they pretended that they were not listening to until we realized that uh, the establishment actually wanted him dead and anyone associated with him killed or jailed. Initially, when it was like it started, majority of the Igbos today that are now more interested in their position in Nigeria and upon discovering that there is already ongoing cold war, unwritten cold war, that cold war, right, that is uh, putting a target on every person that is an Igbo, even if you were well, across or uh, across the Niger, even if you are not Igbo. There is this unwritten cold war after the end of the genocidal war of uh, 1963 to 1970. 
Namdikanu made so many Igbos themselves to realize that, wow, we never saw it that way. They started questioning their position in Nigeria. And every time they attempted it, they met a brick wall that started making sense to them that this is a systemic profiling. It is there in the system. Nobody can explain it. They can give you different, different excuses. So why they hate the Igbos? Why the Igbos must be this? Why the Igbos must be that? Because it is systemic. A lot of Igbos discovered that. And they felt, I mean, they started kind of realizing that they are better off without Nigeria. I mean, a lot of them felt so broken, like, while others felt like Namdikanu was misleading the young people and it could lead to another war. Igbozo, this is not like outsiders now. I'm talking about Igbos who felt personally at the early stage that uh, Namdikanu's uh, messages will only get the Igbos, especially the young ones, angrier at Nigeria. And the more angrier they get, there is likelihood that they are going to pick up arms and decide that they want to leave Nigeria. And in fact, conclude, I mean, complete what uh, their own uh, parents couldn't do or complete at the time. So there are Igbos who feared that. So therefore, they automatically became enemies of Unamdikanu and anything like POB. They called them different names. And these were the willing tools in the hands of the likes of Bokuari to stage the state-sponsored terrorism of eight solid years in eastern Nigeria that still continues to today. Thousands of young people have been killed. A lot have disappeared. Many are in jail as we speak right now under bogus scrupulous uh, charges systemic profiling so it worked for a while and then uh, Bokwari started failing i mean Bokwari's uh, jihadism tribalism you know bigotry they started manifesting i mean it became so obvious that uh, it wasn't hard for Unamdikanu's message and messages to travel far and beyond. Surprisingly, that was just a few months after Bukwari took government that they felt offended. By December 2015, Bukwari's government kidnapped Unamdikanu in Lagos. They were now looking for what to charge him with. Terrorism. Uh, sedition. They should have found all kinds of things they could charge him with. Eventually, none of them could stick. But they, had, they got a good reason to now mobilize the Nigeria military, DSS, and other murderous agents in uniform to eastern Nigeria. Not just that. Across Nigeria, Igbo businesses continue to take serious economy, I mean, serious, uh, what do you call it, economic policies. Eh, ash economic policies that continue to destroy and affect their business. This is like systemic. Every time that Namdikano turned his camera on, more and more unbelievers, they were tuning in. They just wanted to understand Nigeria. And that was how his messages traveled even beyond Igbo land. Beyond. And that was the real threat they didn't tell you. Apart from finding an excuse of killing the Igbos, using Namdekanu's uh, messages and positions as an excuse, yeah, they were worried that if the way this guy was going, it won't just be the Igbos that are going to turn out uh, rebellious. Young, young people in Nigeria, they started tuning in listening to understand what was really wrong with Nigeria. A lot of them were so surprised that did that really happen? Are you, are you serious? Is that, did that happen? I never knew that. Oh, I was never told that in school. 
as old as I am, I didn't know that. This was about uh, eight years ago. Prior to that, four years before that, 12 years ago, eh, he's already been sort of, uh, you know, encouraging all these young, young people, even beyond the, uh, uh, what do you call it, beyond the uh, Igbo land, to see Nigeria for what Nigeria truly was. But what did Bokwari government, what did they do? They spent billions of your money. Not just on propaganda. So that if they could spread enough propaganda and lies, and in fact, fear. That failed, though, by the way. You know what I mean? If they could sp spread enough fear and worry, even Igbos themselves, they would reject Namdekanu. It partially worked. Because I remember when this guy was in the U.S. and he called all the Igbos in the U.S. into a room. And he told them, just like a prophet, he said, the war is coming. It's a jihad. They will come for us. It's to take our lands. Our people are going to be killed. And the government of Nigeria will watch them. Everybody will be asking, government, 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 eh? There will be no government. You will be watching them kill you. This was like impossible. Something that, I, you know, especially for Southerners, the Igbos, it was impossible. What are you talking about? How could Fulani come to Igbo? Like, we don't even have anything to go. Like, how do, it's never going to happen. Ten years ago, before Bokwari, the terrorist, and the rest of them. Eight years ago, rather. Do you know that by the time the Fulani terrorism that people didn't kind of see coming, I believe, but this guy saw it coming. He was mentioning Fulani uh, armed terrorists. Fulani armed terrorists. How could you call Fulani terrorists? They are just arts men. What is wrong with this guy? He just want to create enmity between the people and the and the Fulanis. What is wrong with this Namdekanu? Eh? These guys are just with their cows. They don't make trouble. Or more. The same thing that is giving many of you. The same thing. The same Fulani terrorists that have now sent thousands to their to their early graves. The same full and terrorists that have kidnapped thousands, collected billions in ransom. Eight years ago, Unam Dikanu was like a madman saying something that was totally impossible. He was in America. He said, give us, we need to raise money and mobilize our people so that they will be ready. We need to buy them weapons. They thought he was preparing for war, for asking for a referendum. It worked, though. I'm not saying it didn't work, oh. But I am just kind of telling you how the system, with their own agenda, played a lot of you, only for everybody to end up in this state today. Everybody is now asking, how can, we, we need to defend ourselves. People need to defend themselves. A lot of you eight years ago called Namdekanu a madman. Their propaganda worked on you for some time. Today, you are now asking them to allow you to carry gun. That was what he went to America to do. The Igbos in America at the time, the only Igbos. Majority of them just felt, they said it to his face. Have you thought this through? I mean, our people need peace. We don't want anything that's going to put our people in problem. They nearly blamed him for calling for war. Today, eh? they are the they are his biggest, his biggest disciples today. The Igbos in America. No joko. And that was uh, the moment the asshole rock started crumbling. Namdi Kanu was not just talking about Biafra, Biafra. He was telling people why it is a necessity for everybody to go their separate, I mean, separate ways. Because what was coming with the belief and conviction of an average Fulani from all over the world. That's, that's it. They said they believe traditionally or culturally or historically, whatever. They said by conquest, Uthman Danfodio is the owner of the place called Nigeria today. Whether it is Biafra Lando, whether it is Yoruba Lando, whether Nigeria Lando, even all this, you know what I mean? Like, 
There are people who believe that. You will probably feel like that's impossible. They are just, they are mad. Oh, really? Of course they are mad. And their madness, yeah, is an ideology that says they must kill you if you resist. And the likes of Femi Opunu Adeshino, they were in on it. It was also gaslighting the citizens at the time. When these Fulani terrorists were unleashed on us, when our people started going missing, and our people started, you know, ending up dead, Fulani this, Fulani that. What's going on? The likes of Femi Opunu Adeshino told us, that why are we so, so, uh, you know, interested in our lands? That we decide that we are not going to part the land. When we can part the land and have peace. That's what Femi Okpono Adeshino said. To have peace, so part with your land. And I just never probably in my own while there's the imag I mean, imagination who believe that they also wanted him dead. They played the card so well that they gave him an offer. They gave him a last chance. And that was when Bokwari and his gang met with the Igbo governors, Igbo lawmakers, Igbo elites, and they said they would talk to Namdikano. He would drop all of this agitation thing. And they called him to a meeting. I've shared that with you here before, right? They called him to a meeting in Enugu. At the meeting, hmm, Namdikano was asking for the leadership, Igbo, political leadership in Nigeria. Eh? To look at the position of Igbos in Nigeria today and see what they have done to fail generations. And he asked them for just 11 things. And guess what are those things? Keep our people safe, home grown, developed security system. Provide stable electricity for our people do it not because nigeria won't do it create industries where our youth our young people will be gainfully employed and engaged at least invest in real true people's oriented infrastructures in igbo land that add values to the lives of our people and attract real investment to our region he asks them that he listed all of the things that he wanted them to do if they indeed wanted them to uh, sort of uh, slow down on the Biafra agitation, including asking all the lawmakers in Eastern Nigeria, all of them, including their governors, House of Assembly members, political elite, and the rest of them, to prevail upon their national assembly members eh, to make a move and move a motion for a referendum to be part of that trashy decree 24 you called 1999 uh, constitution i think that was the moment they felt like this guy has to this guy has to be eliminated igbo governors igbo political leaders devuluma he was one of them they saw the danger. They saw his request. This guy was not asking for money. You don't want oil block. You don't, I mean, we could, we could put you on. So, so you know what, we, the kind of deal we did with uh, the uh, Niger Delta uh, militant. We could do that for you in a special way that, you know what I mean? Like just walk away. So you don't want all of that. What, was, what, what will make you reduce the call for the, immediate breakup of uh, Nigeria and Biafra to go right now is if we do all of these things, right? Yes, if you do all of that. Uh, we don't have any plan of uh, doing all of this, so there's no plan. So they reported back to Abuja. 
And I think that was, like I said, that was the last chance they gave him. Because they released him on bail. Gave him some stringent conditions that he started violating immediately. He was like, I'm not going to obey all this nonsense. And he didn't. But nevertheless, they offered him something that he didn't take. So, and they didn't have what he wanted. So the next move is to eliminate him. And that was the first assassination attempt on his life. Mam Dekano resurfaced. Eh? About two years later. And this time around, he resurfaced with a banger. The one that finally got under the skins of a Bokwaris handlers. The one that continues till tomorrow. That is that Bokwari Abina Jibri Ali Sudani. According to Femi Oponu Adeshino, you see that thing that you were all laughing at. Some of you wondering, eh? Big nose, small nose, tiny hair, fat hair, hair old, no hair old. All those things that Unam Dikanu was, you know, the guy was, was ferocious. He was, he was like, Baba, Unam Dikanu's uh, microphone, like uh, uh, Prince Jejeman would say, was bigger than a Tukano, Baba. The guy was everywhere. He was matching them propaganda for propaganda. And guess what? He amassed so much followership, so large, so huge. The Nigeria have to they had to spend billions to match him as he was talking. Eh? It will be put, it will be putting out uh, images, it will be putting out uh, videos, it will be putting out images, it will be you know, things that got so much that world leaders also started seeing it too. And according to Femi Okunu Adeshino, that singular thing that Bokuari. Is not uh, the old Buari. This Bokuari is Jibri from Sudan. And at a point, eh, they were using a clone. And he's actually a clone. Bokuari died. According to Kano, Unam the Kano said, Buari died in 2017. And he was buried in Saudi Arabia. And if they believe that he is lying, as ridiculous as that might sound to a lot of you, he said, if Buari, this Buari is ready to submit himself eh, for a DNA test, they will take the DNA of his children. They will now take the Bukwa, this Buari's DNA. That if they match, if they match, he, Unam Dikanu, will submit himself for any kind of a prosecution and it will stop talking about Biafra. But this guy said that too. Omo. Nobody wanted Buhari to do DNA. But a lot of you were laughing about it, laughing and saying, ha ha ha, ha yeah, funny, ha ha. Buhari was facing hell all over the world. They said, according to Femi Okonu Adishino, they said, Every time Buhari appear anywhere, eh? When they meet world leaders, some of them, eh? Apart from the fact that they were very careful in actually discussing some, you know, like important bilateral, you know, security stuff with this man. But they said every time Buhari walk into a room, everybody in that room, they would just be looking at him like this. You know, like that. To the point, point that it became so embarrassing that a few times some world leaders, they will get closer to him. They will hold him. They will hold him. Like they want to touch if he is real or if he's a clone. And every now and then, this started depressing Buhari. This Buhari, he started having depression. Now the president of Nigeria is having depression. Because now, he has to tell everybody, it's me. I am Buari. I am real. Don't listen to that uh, boy. Don't listen to that Namdekanu. So the solution was, what should we do? I think we should eliminate him. 
assassinating. Or more, government of Nigeria planning to assassinate a citizen because of his own political ideology. Ah, Femi Oponu Adeshino put it in his book. The same Femi Oponu Adeshino in that same useless book, eh, he also said, when Bukwari fell sick, they used air ambulance to airlift Bukwari to London. He said, on many occasions, eh, that even when they were discharged from the hospital, they said, Bokwari would have no idea who he was or where he was. Do you understand? He said, Bokwari's recovery was actually a miracle. If anyone who really doesn't believe there is a miracle, Bokwari's recovery was a miracle. It was a vegetable, just exactly as Unam Dekano was reporting day by day. Ah, Omar. They should release that, that man. Oh. A lot of you have no idea what you are missing or what you have missed. You know what I mean? His words, they were like blades. A lot of people hated him just because of the way he talks. Not because of what he says. If what he says are true or they are lies, if they are facts or they are not, they, they are not after that. They just don't like the way he talks. Because when Unam Dekanu talks, sometimes you feel like he's talking to you directly, like it's you. Go, 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 go. And you know where he will call you? See you, Mumu? Idiot. Idiot. Foolish man. Foolish you. Foolish. You go, they agree. Say, yes. Yes. I've been very foolish. He was very powerful. His words were powerful. They were like blades in the heart of a lot of people who despised him. Ask them, why do you not like Namdekanu? I just don't like him just because of uh, the way he was uh, attacking churches. Attacking churches. He's attacking Yoruba. He's a bigot. He is always there attacking all the Yorubas. He is always uh, blaming Yorubas or blaming uh, Awusas or blaming Fula. No, no, no. He was blaming your leaders and those of you who are their enablers. There is no difference today. So if I call your criminal leaders, criminals, and you jump there and you say, stop insulting our leaders. And I'm like, who are you? You say, why are you insulting the Igbo leaders? Say, oh, you are one of their supporters and their enablers, Abi. You are angry that uh, the criminals in your own tribe or your own ethnic nationality in Nigeria is mentioned. You are angry. Oh, dear. Oh, you are sad because your pastors, your fake pastor, Pastor Prineos, and their business centers, they were focused on because they are Yorubas. Oh, because they are Igbos. Oh, because they are Usas. Come on, man. Go outside and touch the grass. When you look at those who destroyed Nigeria today, you will see them from every ethnic nationalities. The same way he call out all your criminal leaders. He insulted Tinumbu. Abulori Brukuni and I insult Tinumbu all the time. It's not even an insult. It's just stating the facts. Abi, eh? Hopeless. Who's on the bar? Who's on the job? He is from Igbo land. Eh? I talk about him all the time. Probably you laugh. And when I talk about uh, the jihadist terrorist uh, sympathizers from northern Nigeria, I am talking about your leaders. If you begin to, to defend them, then you are a terrorist. So when I talk about your criminal uh, uh, pastors, Abina Imamu, and all those religious uh, uh, criminals who are manipulating you, brainwashing you, all to kind of control you for the bigger ones, the ones that are the politicians. When I talk about them, why did you not take offense? And say, why is this Yoruba boy always abusing our Igbo leaders? Why did you not take offense? Because back then, it was easier for the rogues and their propagandas to get to you until a lot of you realized that you are all victims all of us that was sunam dikanu's message
He is always attacking Yorubas. He is also attacking the Igbos too. Yeah. And he is addressing those of you who are comfortable with the status quo. The comfortable slaves. And he knows he's everywhere. I don't like him. It's, it's, it's going to make people not to like Igbos. No, 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 no. Just say you don't. And you are part of the people we are working on their own uh, deliverance too. Bokuari was cloned. No, he wasn't cloned. Why would that get you so mad that you have to sit in the seat of power of a country? Eh? The supposed the G ant of uh, Africa, biggest uh, black nation on earth. And all of that blah, blah, blah nonsense they have told you. How and why would you say him if indeed Bokuari was not cloned? There is nothing being hidden. There is nothing to hide you. Why would the people in the seat of power sit together and uh, plot the assassination of a citizen who has a different political ideology to yours? Is because they knew they could do it. And they just came out to confirm all the things you've heard. The state-sponsored killings. The politically-sponsored unknown gunmen. The kidnapping of Unam Dikanu was not because he did anything wrong. It was because he said something that made them so uncomfortable that they would have killed him. But they decided to kidnap him. And keep him as a trophy in the process violating the international laws that nigeria is a, a signatory to those treaties they violated those they didn't care then they went back to their country and they rubbished their judicial system rubbished everything all because of one man jubri ali sudani and there is offer on the table if I am lying, please, I am ready to face the consequences of my lie. Ask that man to come for a DNA test. If indeed he is the Bokuari. They never did that. And in fact, when they were charging him, after kidnapping him, they, they removed that part completely. It was nothing like a court Nigeria president clone. A court Nigeria this, that. There was no charges against Namdekanu concerning the cloned Bokuari. Because they said if they had included that in their charges against Namdekanu, that would have defeated the whole nonsense they put together because his lawyers were going to ask that how would these people know that this Buari is the Buari, except the fact that everybody says it is Buari. Eh? How can we know he is the Buari? How can you convict somebody, say he lied, he defamed somebody, when you cannot confirm this is the person? Now let us do a DNA. Just tell Bukwari to open his mouth. Ha! 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 Three times. The result will be ready in a few hours. That's all. Namdekanu said, I would I would submit myself for any sort of a prosecution, okay? And I would opt out completely from the Biafra agitation. They didn't charge him for that. Eh? Nam the canoe got into their skins. Aisha Bokuari, the Ashishe Bokuari, was said to be so mad. She was mad in raving the day. That Unam de Kanu said, Aisha Bokwari is committing a sin, Aram, sleeping with somebody that is not her husband. They say that in Enter Aisha so much. You remember that Aisha relocated finally from Aso Rock? Hmm? Even though they said they no longer sleep in the same room, they no longer sleep together the moment Bokwari came back from that London, looking like uh, a missing, deranged, uh, sorry, demented. Uh, old uh, hag like that. I don't know if you remember that, right? Since then, I, I shall never kind of sleep in the same room with him anymore. At a point, Aisha was almost killed inside the asshole rock. Well, 
they shot guns because she wants to obey the COVID uh, quarantine uh, rules inside the household rock, which means uh, at the time she even came out to say, where are the men in Nigeria? Eh? We're just few men, Mama and Daura and few others are ruling Nigeria because Bokowari probably is no longer present. I remember that time. All of this, every time, Unam Dekano released something, a day or two or three later, eh? alarm go blow inside the asshole rock. Wala go shele. You go begin to see them walking over time. Um, they now decided, I'm going to kill this guy. Oh, anyway, where you see him? Imagine sending an assassin after you. Going after you all over the world. Looking for a, a, a time. And a special, I mean, a perfect place where they can kill you. That was exactly what the life of Unam Dekanu was. That a lot of us didn't know until this Femi Oponu additional book where they confessed to plotting to kill a citizen because the president was uncomfortable and he was depressed. Yeah, that, that happened. That's what Femi Oponu Adishino said. He also said in that uh, Bogos book, he said, Bokwari is not a mean man. He's a very nice man. In fact, when Pastor Ruga's uh, chopper crashed in Kogi and Bokwari heard the news, eh, he shouted, Jesus! That's, that's exactly how Femi Opo, no additional, Alagba for. That's exactly what, she, what he wrote in that uh, trash. In all of this, so, apart from the covert and coordinated operation to kill the Igbos, Operation Python Dance 1, Python Dance 2, Python Dance 3, and so many other operations that led to the death and killing, extrajudicial killing, of civilians. There is still no record of that. Oh. There is no investigation of that because it is still ongoing. Baba, they were bombing villages in Igbo land. It was sanctioned in Abuja that Nigerian aircraft, Nigerian fighter jets flew from Abuja straight to Igbo land, Olu, Osu, and some other places. They were dropping bombs on villagers because of this Nam Dekanu. On villagers. So how did they know that uh, the Oribu jihadist was also a very nice man because when Pastor Ruga is deputy, is a special advisor on uh, condolences uh, visits, barrier arrangements, as well as uh, trader money and market money. Pastor Ruga Ikene Shatabandu, the Agbowori Babaoja, or Shumbade, they said when his uh, shopper crashed in Kogi, where he was there to share money, the shopper crashed. And when Bokwari heard the news, according to Femi Okpono Adeshino, he screamed, Jesus! That makes him a very nice person. Man, he said a lot of things, though, but this particular one and particular confession. You remember when I told you that uh, Tifnubu should not inherit Bokwari's uh, enemies? Now Bokwari gets depression. Can't decide to go and kidnap Namdekanu. He did not kidnap Namdekanu because Namdekanu committed any crime. No. He kidnapped him because Namdekanu told the world something that the world should never know. And he deserved to die. But to favor him, let's just kidnap him and keep him away. Tell your children that. And whatever your position has been, I am not trying to change your position on things, though, because their propaganda on you runs deep. Today, eh? there are some, so many of you that are having... Thank you so much for sticking to this video to the end like i said before now it's time for us to go to the comment section to air our mind and our opinion say what you think about this video and this platform 
do it constructively share this video like subscribe and also continue to watch linda's tv show because this is the home of news until i see you again in my next video remain blessed for now i would say bye bye